Okay, root. Uh, okay, so the next page you see here, because this is actually following in a chronological order, as I mentioned in the in my update video. So you did you actually do see that we're going in chronological order. We started with the identification, then we went to initial reference page, then we went to the root. We're on root right now, and next is performance initialization, and this is m a bit more complicated because we have here a bunch of fields that we absolutely need to enter. This is this is critical because this is this is going uh, our aircraft navigation is going to be based on this strongly on this and this is the ground weight and slash screws center of gravity 24.6 right now zero fuel weight our reserves the cost index and the cruising altitude these are critical that we enter especially the ground weight and zero fuel weight so we I'm not actually gonna go in and enter in manually because this is the beauty of a uh, flight simulator um, the the weight is already you can actually go into you know your fuel and load uh, settings on the flight simulator and actually look at the ground or zero fuel weight ground uh, gross weight stuff like that but if you click it will actually do it for you so if you click the button next to it it entered in 134,000 this is pounds zero fuel weight 128,000 pounds um, our reserves I I typically like to do 2.0. Um, that's up to you. That's that's up to you as a pilot. Um, pilots usually do add about a thousand pounds of um, you know of uh, uh, this is the reserve. Basically, this fuel is reserved for um, ground operations. You know, taxiing. Um, to to and from the runway and stuff like that, you know, holding short, all that stuff. So this is the reserves that we have available. And now our cost index, which is again not modeled in flight simulator, but this is a number that's generated by the airlines. Each airline has a different cost index, and basically it's a number that represents the way basically their their, their economy, how their economy is set. So it's a number from one to one hundred, so typically just type in one hundred for this in this case. And it again, it does nothing in flight simulator. It also shows based on a cost index of a hundred what our trip is. Uh, this flight level three eight seven, uh, but I already set my cruising altitude at thirty six thousand feet. So 36,000 feet, and again the execution button because we have entered in new values gets lit up. So we press that to give the airplane <coughs> FMC. Okay, so it's not displaying insufficient fuel. Um, I have actually added in um, 900 pounds or 900 gallons, I should say. It is required to have for this flight. It's required to have. Um, about uh, 300 pounds, uh, 300 gallons of fuel. So let's go ahead and delete that. Now the next page is N1 limit. And N1 limit we usually don't touch. Um, you usually have climb modes. There, these are different climb modes that you can set for N1 limit. N1 limit, this is the page that we talked about earlier. So uh, basically the turbine limit percentage. Um, and it's usually set in climb. This is the s the default, of the standard climb setting. There is also climb one and climb two, in case we need to do any. Um, these these are for different uh, um, situations. So we can go ahead and go to our tech takeoff page. And our takeoff page has a bunch more information we need to fill in. Flaps. V one rotate um, VR and V2. VR is rotate speed and V2 is um, this is basically the this the the speed that we we reach after after we lift off from the ground. 
So the flaps for a 737 is generally 15 degrees. So we set a 15 degree flaps. And again, we can go ahead and click the buttons next to the V1s, V2, and VR to fill them in. These are these are calculated based on conditions such as flap settings, temperature, uh, stuff like that. It's it weight, um, but of course, flight simulator does a good job of calculating it. There's that insufficient fuel message again. Okay, so this is basically all we need to calculate for now. I mean, all we need to enter for now. There's, of course, other things depending on your flight chart. It might ask you to um, to put in... Uh, t it might have, uh, again, special situations where you need to intercept a certain radial um, after takeoff. Uh, but this is generally on the flight chart. I don't have any flight charts because they do actually cost money even for... because for there aren't any really any flight simulator ones. They're really real charts that they put on the internet and of course real charts. They cost money because they get updated frequently. So these people, those people need to be paid of course. So it, you get a message saying pre-flight complete. So this is the minimum settings that we need to have a successful flight from point A to point B using the FMC. So next then the last step that I will be going through in this tutorial um, before I do that actually I'm going to show you the progress page so the progress page basically tells us that we reach EHAM in 207 nautical miles currently we have about 6,000 pounds of fuel and when we get to EHAM we'll have about <laughs> we'll have nothing um, this is my mistake. I have not entered the fuel sufficiently for this, um, but uh, that should, I mean, it's not going to be enough even when we go up in the air. It will still, <coughs> it will, I, of course, that number will increase because we'll get more efficient, but we will still not have enough for a safe flight because in case we need to do diversions or stuff like that, we will not have enough fuel for that. So that's that. And this is the again, this is the complete progress page now you can actually see all the values. So from EGLL to EHAM, EGLL um an altitude of 83 feet <laughs> um 11:52 Zulu time. The current fuel is 5.9 um so 5900 pounds. Um, next waypoint is BPK, and we'll reach it in 22 nautical miles, and about 12:11 uh, Zulu time. Waypoint after that, we reach it 69 nautical miles, and it'll be at 12:17 Zulu time. And I believe that's actually the last waypoint before we uh, before we reach uh, Sheeple. And um, that's gonna have we're gonna have 0 0.1 so hundred pounds of fuel <laughs> that's not gonna be enough not nearly enough and you'll notice here we have 2 T slash C 1218 Zulu time and 76 nautical miles what this is is it's basically showing us the time and the distance to when we're gonna have when we're gonna reach our top of climb so basically when we're gonna be at 36,000 feet in 76 miles and at 12:18 Zulu time. So this is basically the FMC in a you know this is in 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 a, a few series. Um, now, one thing before I let you go and I want to show you is how to do modifications to your route, which is very important to know in case you need to do um, in case you need to perform them.